So we're going to do this again. We're going to write all of the variations of the following statement. I'm going to give you the conditional statement. If the animal is furry, so the P is going to be the animal is furry, then the animal is a cat. So the animal is a cat is a Q. All right. And my first conditional was if P then Q. So the converse, we're going to write if Q then P. So if the Q part is the animal is a cat, then the animal is furry. Okay, so the inverse would be if not P, then not Q. If not P, so that P is the animal's furry, so if the animal is not furry, then the animal is not a cat. And then the last one is the contrapositive, which is if not Q, then not P. So if not Q, that's the blue one. If the animal is not a cat, then not P, right? Then the animal is not furry. So in the inverse, we have knots. In the contrapositive, we also have knots. Okay, so which ones are equivalent statements? So the conditional, if the animal is furry, then the animal is a cat. If the animal is furry, then the animal has to be a cat. That is equivalent to saying, if the animal is not a cat, then the animal is not furry, which is the contrapositive. So the conditional and the contrapositive are equivalent. The converse, if the animal is a cat, then the animal is furry. If the animal is not furry, then the animal is not a cat. Now, you can probably think up counterexamples to each of these uh, statements. Um, I'm sure you've seen uh, furry animals that are not cats before, and I'm sure, and I believe there is one t breed of cat that doesn't actually have any fur. Um, but the um, the statements are still equivalent, even if there is some sort of counterexample out there. Um, that's not really what we're what we're studying, what we're studying is if you're saying one thing and someone else is saying um, something else, are they equivalent or are they not equivalent statements? Are they, if if in certain situations, if they're true, are they going to be also true in those same situations if you rearrange some of the wording? So um, we're not really asking you to think up counterexamples like, well, my dog's furry. That's not what we're really talking about. We're just analyzing how to construct um, the statements. And this last one, write this statement into a conditional statement and then write all the variations. So the statement is all Americans eat hot dogs. Well that's not a conditional, that's not an if-then statement as it is. But we can write this as a conditional statement. So if all Americans eat hot dogs then we can say if you are an American, and that's going to be our P, then you eat hot dogs. Okay, and that's going to be our Q. So I've just rewritten all Americans eat hot dogs into a conditional statement, if P then Q. If you're an American, then you eat hot dogs. So now I can find the converse of this, and the converse would be if Q then P. So if you eat hot dogs, 
then you are an American. And that would be the converse. The inverse would be if not P, then not Q. If you are not an American, then you do not eat hot dogs. And the last one is the contrapositive, which is if not Q, then not P. So if you do not eat hot dogs, then you are not an American. Okay, and lastly we're going to identify the equivalent statements. The conditional and the contrapositive we know are, in, are equivalent. So if you're an American, then you eat hot dogs. Is e An equivalent statement would be, if you do not eat hot dogs, then you are not an American. Those are basically saying, conveying the same information. The converse and the inverse are also equivalent. Um, that says, if you eat hot dogs, then you are an American, is the same thing as saying, if you are not an American, then you do not eat hot dogs. Those are equivalent statements. And this concludes our lesson on equivalent statements and variations of the conditional statement.